Hi, so today we're going to do a little bit more on probability. We've been working on a lot. We've done the multiplication rule, addition rule, complement, conditional probability, and permutations and combinations. But this is what I'd like to take a closer look at. So today we're going to be doing stuff that's a little more advanced. Um, if it doesn't quite work for you, that's okay. This is just adding more precision onto what we have. You still can do very well without using this. So just remember, combinations, um, this is our combination equation right here. And a combination is when you can arrange things in different ways, but it doesn't really change the outcome that much, um, versus a permutation. Now, permutation equation is a little bit different here. And this one, the arrangement does make a difference, because if we're choosing our favorite cartoon characters, um, we really do care what order it's in, whether SpongeBob or uh, Bart is first, second, or third. It actually really does make a difference to us. All right, so when to use it in an actual probability problem. So here's an example. Now, say you have the probability you roll a dice four times and the last two rolls are sixes. Okay, I've told you the exact order how everything happens. When you know this, you don't need to worry about permutations and combinations. We already know exactly how it played out. This example, however, is a little bit different. The probability... Um, that you roll a dice four times and get two sixes. Now I told you you roll four times just like over here and I told you, you get two sixes just like over here but here you knew exactly when they occurred. Here you don't. It could happen at the end. The two sixes could be your first two rolls. They could be the first and the last. The two middle rolls. There's even more um, combinations than that. So this means that we have a lot of options of what could happen this or this or this. So there is a little bit more math you can do. And when this is the case, we need to bring in the permutations and combinations. So let's look at this problem more carefully. All right, so probability using combinations and permutations. Taking that example, the probability you roll a dice four times and get two sixes. Step number one. This is a step that I hope everyone can do. This is where you need to be. Find simple probability. All right, so the simple probability would be no six, no six, and then a six and a six. We figure that out and we get this number here. I could turn it into percent and you're done. You've done a great job. You've done the basics of what you need for this class. All right, to take it up a notch though, you might look a little harder and think. When you read the problem, do you know the order things happen? No, I don't actually know the order. Okay, because it didn't tell me what it happened. So I need to use permutations or combinations. Which one? Step number three, I need to pick. If the things you select can swap places without changing anything, you use combination. So here, does it matter where those two sixes occur? Do I still have the end result of getting two sixes? And the answer is yes, it doesn't really matter. I can swap the two sixes and it's still getting two sixes. So I'm going to use combinations, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and find them. Um, so I need to solve for my combination. So N here is the number of things I pick. I'm picking, I'm actually picking, or I'm rolling four dice, so that would be four. R is the number of items interested in. I'm interested in two sixes, so four and two. I go ahead and put that together as four C2, and I end up with six. Last step, multiply your simple probability by that combination number that we found. So I'm going to do four C2 times that simple probability from up there, and you end up with 11.57%. So that means that the probability of rolling um, four dice and getting two sixes would be 11.57 percent. All right, here's another example. In a class of 30, what's the probability that Ivy, Justice, and Joe will be selected as either president, vice president, or treasurer of the class? Okay, we can do this. I'm going to just start by finding the simple probability. That is Ivy, Joe, and Justice. So the uh, probability of getting Ivy first, well, she's one out of 30. Joe is one out of 29 people and justice is one out of 28. The probability of that is quite small. So, um, but if I've done it here, I have done this much. I've done the simple probability of picking those three people. Awesome. All right, now let's take it that up a notch if you want to, okay? So you have to think, when I read the problem, do I know the order of things happen? Well, 
I don't know who gets what role. I don't know who's president, vice president, or treasurer, so I don't really know the order. Um, they each could be one of those. So this has more to it. I want to bring in combinations or permutations. Which one, C or P? Well, the question for C was, does it matter if I switch two people? Well, does it matter? It actually does, yes, because people are going to care whether president or vice president. So order does matter here, so it is a permutation. So I'm going to use the, the NPR here. So I'm going to solve for that. And the number that I pick, the total number I'm selecting, well, three people. R, how many I'm interested in? Well, I'm interested in the three positions, so that's also a three. And so I go ahead and solve that, 3P3, which is six. The last step is to multiply that simple probability by the NPR. We go ahead and multiply those two and we get 0.025%. So the chance of picking those three people for any of these three positions is crazy small, just 0.025%. Let's look at another example. What is the probability that Ivy and Justice will be selected as two out of the five representatives for class 30? Well, let's find the simple probability. That's what I want you to be able to do. Again, if all you can do is step one, you are doing great, you where you need to be. Okay, so the probability of Ivy and Justice, and then just three other reps after that, because there's a total of five reps. Well, Ivy, one out of 30. That leaves for Justice, that's just one Justice, and there's 29 left, and then after that, we're just picking the other three. 28 left out of 28, 27 left to pick for representatives out of 27. Anyway, we get this small number. Again, if this is all far as you go, just turn that into percent and you're done. If you want to go farther, think. When you read the problem, do you know the order that things happen? No, I don't. It didn't say exactly like I pick Ivy, then I pick Justice. No, I, I really don't quite know the order. So if I don't know the order, then I'm going to go to, um, should I do a combination or a permutation? So here, I'm going to say a combination. Since, though I don't know the order, it doesn't matter. I still get the same thing. If I go IV justice, rep, 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 it's exactly the same. If I swap it and do justice, IV, rep, rep, rep. Okay, so I feel good about that. Next, I'm going to solve that, knowing um, it's going to be a combination. So I'm picking five representatives, so N is five. I'm interested in two, that's Ivy and Justice. Go ahead and solve it and you get 5C2, which is also six. Now, last step, I multiply the simple probability up here by my combination and we end up with the probability of picking those two as reps along with other three uh, classmates is just 0.69%, not that big. All right, I hope this is helpful for you guys. Again, if you can just find the simple probability, that's great. If you can take it to the next level, awesome.